how good are the pros? And so here today I am in Copenhagen's KBK, so Copenhagen Badminton Club. I have got someone here to play with me. He's an actual pro. He's trying to do some warm-ups here. <laughs> so that's Howard. So we'll find out how good I am against a real pro. Hey guys, so I'm guessing you all know how the result will go even before the game finishes but the key question here is just how good are the pros compared to us amateurs? What are the things they focus on and what do they look out for? So I'll just add the conversations and discussions I've had with Howard after our games here as he picks apart the areas we should focus on, especially while the game is on. Additionally, remember to protect your precious badminton rackets with the premium racket protection tape on ckyw.com forward slash shop 2. Thanks again to Howard for playing with me and giving me so much time. Go support his YouTube channel too, I've linked it in the description below. Let's go. One of the problems for me was I didn't really know where your shots were coming from. It, it will seem very slow on camera, yeah. but that's probably like the fastest I've moved ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, obviously one of the things that we focus on is keeping the short the strokes short. Yeah. Right, so it's hard to read. Um, but this game particularly, I was trying more to just retrieve. Yeah. Um, try not to make too many errors and uh, not play too many risky shots. But maybe the second set, I will try to give you some more difficult shots. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So in terms of percentage, how far were you? So in, in my in my opinion, I think you're like 30 out of three out of ten tops. Maybe probably even cruising uh, in first gear, really, like one out of ten in terms of effort. Uh, definitely not effort. I think a little more effort than three out of ten. Uh, because, like I said, I'm focusing on retrieving. I mm -hmm. uh, wasn't playing too many risky shots, but I wanted to make sure I was keeping the shuttle in and make it difficult for you to score. Yeah. Because um, you did have a few opportunities where you're making good uh, risk-taking shots yep. to try to score. Yep. So those are the ones I was really focusing on. So I think we've just come off two games. Yeah. You look like you've not gone, you just not even finished warm-up yet. <laughs> um, it's a very different game um, for me. So what I was trying to do was just, I was trying to keep it in. That, that was all I was trying to do. I, I was not trying to be fancy. Yeah. I was just trying to move you around court. Um, but then a lot of the rallies did not last three hits really. Yeah. Um, three strokes and it seemed like you knew where the shot was going to begin with even yeah. even before I hit it yeah um, and then your your shot which is second shot was so good in terms of quality that I wasn't able to do much and then just died from there really yeah I mean how is it from your perspective like yeah what, what advice can you give players like me or amateurs <clears throat> everywhere yeah so uh, like you mentioned, for me the main focus was getting quality on the second retrieving shot, receiving shot, right? Once I'm able to get into uh, an advantage in the rally, yeah. it makes it very difficult for you to get back into the rally. What do you look for? Like say even so when you're serving, yeah. what do you look for from, from me, from your opponent? Sure. Uh, so I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually very much focusing on my service alone already. It's very flat. So you're tight. taking, it's very tight, yeah. so you're taking almost every service receiving. Um, either at the half of the net below the or tape. below below yeah. the tape. So I you're, noticed that. Yeah. So when you're so low, even on a few, uh, if you play a net right away, yeah. you notice how I'm coming in very high. My racket's out, yeah. and you almost are frozen. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I couldn't do anything because yeah. you flicked me so many times, and I was always late for the show. And I noticed you coming into the front of the net, and I couldn't get it out. I couldn't get it out of trouble because it was so far behind me. Yeah. And I think in the first set, you served. I, put, I pounced on your serve a little bit, yep. and then it went out because it was so flat. Um, and then since then, your serve just got shorter and shorter. Except the first point was just short, yeah. the rest of them were in. Yeah, so exactly. So from service alone, there's a lot of variation already. I was switching it up mm. um, between your forehand, your backhand, um, just to give it a little bit of different uh, variety. Yeah. 
Um, and then from there, like I said, it, a lot of it in the rally is building an advantage. And what I mean by that is taking the shuttle higher. So even if tough. I'm taking it higher at the net That's or from the backcourt, um, you're taking your recovery it's shot almost at the waist or below because <laughs> yeah. you're so late, yeah. right? And so if you, you know, for me, it's focusing on building that advantage in the rally and yeah. eventually it makes it much, much easier because it limits your opponent's um, options of what shots they can play. Yeah and it takes away the probability of them hitting a winner. So, you know, for me, let's say I'm having you very deep in one corner, I almost do not even need to pay attention to my uh, cross court clear or yeah. back court corner. Like, yeah. I only take three corners now because the chances of you hitting that type of shot is just so low, yeah. right? And even if it's a yes, you can still get to that shot yeah. and get out of trouble. Exactly. Yep. Another one that I noticed was, especially on the round the head shots, so you play a lot of round the heads. Um, but it's not a comfortable round ahead for me. I was still taking a round ahead, yeah. but it was all here. Yeah. Like, it, it's a something or nothing angle. Yeah. It's not that I'm here where I can literally turn the shoulder or even punch clear. Yeah. It's always a lot of them here. Yeah. And so I can't do much with that. Yeah. Tai Zing can. Yes. <laughs> She's very yeah. good at that. A lot of women singles are very good at that. Yeah. And because they play those flatter clears, um, they're able to just, they don't use so much backhand as much as men singles, I would say. Yeah. I think maybe, yeah. We, do get lazy, I guess, in yeah. that sense. Yeah. But so, were you consciously able to just punch it to the height that you want? Because obviously, you play me, I'm a lot shorter than yeah. say you play Kari. Yeah. His angle for this would be very different to mine. Correct. And, and so, one is uh, perhaps it's just that little slight second delay where you're a little bit uh, later yeah. than you would want to be, yeah. or else you should be able to get there. But again, it, also, I would say that uh, I'm getting pretty close to the lines yeah. um, when I'm aiming. Yep. And so keeping it towards the lines at a flatter angle with a little bit of speed is wh is why you'll feel like you just can't really get it at a comfortable angle. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't, those shots I normally, I would love to be able to stick smash yep. or in Mandarin the entire, right? Yep. But I couldn't, like the angle was just either, it was too fast and it was behind me. Sorry! I only, all I could do was punch clear, which was a bad quality clear. Mm -hmm. It's not even a clear really, it's only three quarters. Yeah, and so in those situations, you either have to resort to your backhand, Aye, nice. or what you have to work on is being able to turn that hip faster yeah. to get a little bit. So from my overhead, sometimes, even though if I'm a little late for a stick smash or a punch clear, yeah. I'm able to do at least a reverse slice and slow it down a little. Um, I think I did it a few times yeah, from, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. from the overhead side. And it was so short. Yeah. I mean, I, I know the shows are slow, but it's yeah. no excuse, but the quality was like, it was a foot. Yeah in front of the service line and you go, oh god, like that's a lot of angle, a yeah. lot of distance. And if, and if your opponent is not kind of in their power stance, it's very hard for them to accelerate back to their front uh, backhand corner. Okay. What's the three advice you would give amateurs when, when, when playing someone who's better? Yeah. What three advice would you give them? I think you really have to be tactical um, and have a strategy of how to score. So for, for you guys, I think it's almost like for us in critical points, that's the focus. Right? Yep. You need to have a strategy, a, a go-to shot, something where you're putting together a series of shots to score. You can't just go on thinking um, it's just the next point. Right? And so yeah, yeah. to be able to put together points, and I could see your, your, your thinking of mm. different ways to put together points, whether it's you know a straight smash and just coming in, anticipating a block yeah. to go for the cross. Yeah. You have to have a strategy or a plan to score a point, or without that, ah. even in a normal rally, it's so difficult. And so once you start able to realize that and you're able to put together a string, you know, four or five, six different points of how you want to score, yeah. then the game starts to become easier. So instead of just standing there and thinking about where I'm serving to, I need to be thinking, ooh, where's Howard going to return to? And then try and not gamble, but anticipate on where I'm going to move faster into that corner and then try and hit those third shot and then think about the fifth. Exactly. Right before you serve. Exactly. I mean, it's a, it's a game of chess, right? And so uh, top players are three, four, five moves ahead of you, right? And so it, that's really what it is. You always need to be planning for the next move. Um, there's so much adjustment in the game within the game, yeah. right? And so at the very high level, you know, one point changes so much strategy and you almost have to be thinking what they're trying to do so that you can change what you're trying to do. Yeah, because even at the start of the game, our shuttle, it was a lot faster. Yep. Towards the end of the game, it was so slow that I didn't think... 
I was trying to put length in and it was going out. Mm -hmm. It was going out. And then so I then tried to put more height in, mm -hmm. but it gave you more time. Mm -hmm. So it's just really, yeah, just how to combat, yeah. how to manage that process. Especially when you come up against someone who's faster, stronger, more skilled. Okay. Um, I think you did a really good job actually. Um, like I said, for you as a as a player, it's it's good to see that you're thinking about how to score. Yeah. Whereas some players are on court and they're just hitting the shuttle, and you can tell there's really nothing turning up there, right? So it was it was uh, nice to see what you were trying to do, and for me to uh, as well adjust according to your game. For players who wants to go professional, mm -hmm. what advice do you have? So I so so I have a lot of juniors. I, I have a lot of very young players yeah. uh, who ask who often ask. How can I get to the professional ranks? Yeah. Obviously me having no experience in professional ranks, yeah. you do. What advice can you give them? I think for younger players, one of the most key things is obviously physicality. You <laughs> have to be able to be able to play at the speed um, of these top players. It's getting, yeah. it's becoming such a physical sport. Um, men's singles, men's double, I mean every event, every discipline, it, every top player is so fast, so strong. And so without that, there's almost no chance, right? Um, and so you'll notice the speed is just quite fast, right? So, there's so much difference, like first five points. I don't think the show has come at me this fast before. But you know, you just forehand. It's, just, I, it's not even a clip down, it's just flat drives. Just, it's a neutral shot. Yeah. And it's so fast. Yeah. It's not even a smash, it's a neutral shot just to get out of trouble. Yeah, it was so fast. Yeah. So again, physicality, and then with that comes uh, quality. Quality of shots also becomes very, very key. Uh, like you mentioned, those shots are feeling uh, at a high speed to you, right? Um, but for me, I'm really focusing on just the quality, uh, the angle, um, all of those different uh, factors. Okay. Yeah. So there was one, I believe, um, you came in at the forehand net uh, and you tried to cross net me. Yeah, yeah. And it was out. But you were actually so high at the net, so just, and I was coming in, but that's why my move was to come in to force you to do something else. But you should have net that with a net spin. Good idea. Because if it was good quality, what are my options? If I can't brush it, I'll have to lift. Or you would want me to try to re-net because that's a low probability for a winner if, yeah, you're, yeah, if yeah. you're net spin, right? And so you see and how I, I kind of baited you to the open spaces um, where you, you, the next shot should have been a net. And so that's why you'll see um, these, these uh, top players when they're playing at high rallies, it's almost like they're moving so seamlessly. Yeah. It's because they're doing what they're supposed to do and nothing out of character because that would be the high risk shot. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I was going for high risk shots, like, like that cross net. Cross net. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, a lot of it is just about building advantage in a point to where you get to a point where it's uh, an 80 or 90 percent winner is what your what, what mm. the goal is. Yeah. Got an update. It's 11 love. <laughs>